Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of PHT TV. Over the last couple of weeks, we have talked about the RP8000s, the RP6000s, and I have something special for you this week. We have received a massive number of requests, not only this season, but all of last season, to break these guys out of the box, and finally here they are. Today we're going to dive into the king of the line, the RF7s. Now, this will not just be a one episode event. The plan is to not only compare these to the RP8000s, but also compare them to the previous generation RF7s. We'd also like to have Trey back to discuss some of the history of the RF7s, as well as the entire reference and reference premiere line. After that, maybe we'll even throw the Forte 4s against the RF7s. That's a comparison I've been dying to hear myself. Throw a comment down below, let us know which of these you'd like to see, or which one you're most excited about. From here, we plan to put all of these guys to the test and see what they can do. That said, if you have not already, please click that like and subscribe button below, and click the little bell next to it to enable notifications. Not only is this going to let you know as soon as new videos release, but it will also be the first step to put you in the running for many of our giveaways and our contests that we have here on PHT TV. Speaking of which, if you haven't seen the Fives unboxing video, make sure you check it out. We'll actually be giving away a pair of the Fives, and that episode will tell you exactly how to enter the contest. That's enough about other episodes though, let's go ahead and crack these guys out of the box and see what's inside. As always, I'll mention this in every video, I always cut sideways so not to potentially damage any internal contents. The first thing that you see is going to be the RF7 III and RC64 III owner's manual. Side note, leave a comment below if you'd like to see that RC64 III unboxed, and maybe we'll unbox the 504C as well and compare them side by side. I don't think we've done a comparison of the center channels yet. I think that'd be pretty cool. Now underneath our owner's manual, next we're going to have our box here. What this is, is this is the plinth for the unit. Now similar to the heritage line, these are actually packed upside down. So if you pull this back, you can actually see the screw holes where the plinth is going to go. So rather than try and flip this thing over multiple, multiple times, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to pull the plinth now and put it on while it's in the box. That way when I flip it over, we are all good to go. Now, in addition to the screws to mount it on there, you also have spike feet that are included in there, as well as rubber bumpers. We are on a wood floor, so I'm not going to use these spike feet. I'm going to use the rubber bumpers instead. And finally, I am going to pull out this next box, which is going to be the grill. I'll actually set this off to the side for now. And finally, the big moment. Let's go ahead and get these guys out of the box. Now, on the inside of the box, I know it came out just like this, but it was actually wrapped in this plastic and had the foam coverings, but with the manner that we unboxed it, it just slid right off. All right, so here we have the RF7 III. This is the black ash finish, but please keep in mind that they are also available in walnut and cherry. Like the others, the veneer is notable on these. They use a furniture grade veneer, making it really easy to fit in with everything else in your household. Now, as we mentioned the previous weeks, one of the biggest considerations when purchasing the floor standing speakers and comparing them with each other tends to be the size. As such, it's notable that these are in fact not small. <laughs> Every component is taken to the next level in the RF7s, and as such, the cabinet is bigger as well. So, these are 49 inches tall by 13.87 inches wide by 17.87 inches deep. If you were to drop down to the RP8000s, those are 43 inches tall by 10.9 inches wide by 17.5 inches deep. As far as appearance goes, these came to life in 2017, which is before the 6000s, it's before the 8000s, which came to life in 2018. As such, they blend the aesthetics of the earlier and the later generation reference Premier line. They do have the removable magnetic grills, making it really easy to take on and off. 
As far as drive components go on the RF7s, they feature a 10 inch spun copper ceramic woofer and a one and three quarter inch compression driver. The port design is actually different as well. It features a dual chambered base reflex as opposed to the single Tractrix port on the 6000s and the 8000s. Now, most of this you're actually gonna be able to find on the spec sheet, so I'm not gonna dive into every single little detail, but like I've said in the previous videos, we actually wanna dive a bit deeper on each component in this season. Like the others, I'm actually gonna pull them apart to show you how to replace components should it ever be needed, but also to show you the insides of these units. So, nothing left to do except for let's pull these guys apart and show you what's inside. So similar to the RP8000Fs and the RP6000Fs, you do not see any screws when you're looking at the compression driver. Also similar though, all you have to do is pull off this piece here and it'll reveal the screws underneath. Now, it does use a T20 star bit. Now that you have all the screws out, you do only want to pull it out a little bit because you're going to want to remove the wires. So what you do is you take your fingers and you pinch in here and you can pull that out. Pinch in here. You can pull that out and then just shove it back in there for now. And that is how you remove the compression driver on the RF7s. I'm going to set this off to the side for now. Let's lower the camera and we will remove the woofer. Similar to the compression driver, it is going to use a T20 hex head. Now as soon as you pull out, start to pull out this last screw, you'll start to see the driver wanting to come out. So I'm going to hold it with one hand and unscrew with the other. And as I said in past videos, typically if you are going to remove these driver components, you want to lay it on its back. But with it upright, I can more easily show you guys how to work the unit here. Pinch and pull. And here we have our 10 inch RF7 woofer. I'm gonna set this off to the side. Now, before we go any further though, I do wanna show you what the inside of this unit looks like. So, if we take a look inside here, you'll notice that behind here, we actually do see light shining through. So that is the rear Tractrix port. We can actually access the top woofer. There's a lot of foam, but we can access the top woofer from the cavity for the compression driver. But in between the two woofers, there's actually wood separating the two. That's what I was talking about when I mentioned the dual chamber. So there's actually a separation between the top half of the cabinet and the bottom half of the cabinet. So that is all of our components out of the RF7s, and here's a look at how they look side by side. In addition to the diameter of the woofer, which is significantly larger, you'll also notice that the size of the basket and the size of the magnet grows significantly larger as you move up from model to model as well. Much larger here, then much larger here when you get to the RF7. Like I said before, everything is a little bit more beefy in the RF7 than it is in the other units. As mentioned before, this is not gonna be a one episode event. You're gonna see a lot more of these after I put them back together. Throw a comment down below to let us know where you guys want us to go next and what you'd like to see them compared to. Make sure you're subscribed to get a notification when the next video drops. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Jason and I'll see you again next week for another episode of PHT TV. Hey guys, I'm sure you never see me before because I never been in these videos. If you see me before on a video, give me a thumbs up. Tell me about the RS7s. You know what? My favorite part of the RF7s are the woofers. You see these? These. Hey! I'm sure you never see me before. Because I was 
Well, I guess you see me before on the other video, but our camera died, so I'm sorry I didn't get to spend the whole video with you. But well, hey, tell me about the ORF sevens. But my favorite part is the woofers. You seen them with the other video, two videos ago, when my dad was taking um, it apart. Why is the woofer your favorite part? Because, because this part. Are RF7s the best speakers in the world? Almost, because the ones on my, on all of these, the ones that are made from clips, they're all my favorite kind. Which one's your favorite speaker in the world? Um, I still don't know about that. You gotta listen to them all to find out. Mm-hmm. You say, I click the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next no, week. No, no, no. Um, I'm not done. You're not done. And I also seen over. I can't see anything past there, buddy. You gotta stay in the middle. Over here. Um. Why is this having lines on the bottom? Because. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> All right. Tell me more about the RF7s, buddy. This whole video is only about the RF7s. So. Seeing this part, you mostly see this is the back of it. So, you're going to see that um, there's a hole right here and right here. And this is the front of the RF7s. This is the back of the RF7s. So... If you want to learn more of the RF7s, you um, can subscribe down below. And if you want to watch videos, come again soon. Bye. See you next week. Bye. See you next week on PHTTV. See you next week on PHTTV. Bye.